Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic Second Nature. Show me your teeth, and I'll tell you who you are. Teeth are one of the most useful and specialized adaptations in the animal kingdom. Not everyone has teeth which are snow white and evenly spaced, but anyone can have clean ones. You can generally get a lot of information about an animal's diet just by looking at the tools in their mouth. In some cases, teeth can evolve into really strange tools. These are nature's coolest teeth. How are your teeth? Have you thought of them lately? Well, that's what we want to talk about, about your teeth. Will everybody in the audience please run the tip of his tongue over his teeth? Just to get into the spirit of the story, please. That's right, thank you. Teeth had humble beginnings. They're thought to have originated from modified scales that helped the first jawed fish catch their prey. Since then, fish teeth have developed into a variety of weapons. Most fish are carnivores, and so their teeth are designed for snatching prey. The ocean-dwelling Sloan viperfish and the vampire fish of the rivers of South America separately evolved giant needle-like teeth to kill prey. In the vampire fish's case, their teeth can be up to 15 centimeters long. The vampire fish doesn't really drink blood, but there are fish that do and their mouths are even more terrifying than your favorite Transylvanian ghouls. The sea lamprey, for example, has concentric rows of teeth to attach itself to its prey. Then, it uses the teeth on its tongue to scrape off scales and flesh until its prey bleeds. It will stay attached until it's had its fill of blood. Similarly, Cookie cutter sharks have circular mouths with teeth designed to gouge almost perfectly circular chunks of meat in one bite. They usually target larger prey that are unable to stop the small shark's swim by attack. Of course, if we're talking about sharks, we need to mention the incredible badassery of the Helicoprion, which lived about 300 million years ago. Their lower jaws have a spiral-like structure full of teeth called a whorl. How it's used and where it's located on the shark has been a mystery for a century, but new studies indicate that it sat inside the mouth closer to the jaw joint. Paleontologists say that the buzzsaw shape was probably used to snarl and slice into soft-bodied prey like squid. Their cousins, Carcharocles megalodon, were the largest sharks to ever live. They had relatively normal teeth, except for the fact that they could be over 18 centimeters long and serrated like steak knives. Their prey probably consisted mostly of whales, so big teeth were necessary. Looking at the mouth of a predator, it becomes very evident that you don't want to catch the business end of those chompers. One of the most terrifying sets of teeth ever belonged to the mighty T-Rex. To get into the juicy parts of large, thick-skinned dinosaurs such as the Triceratops, T-Rex needed some of the largest teeth ever recorded. They were about twice the size of a banana to go along with a bite that could produce seven tons of force. If you're watching this video looking for nightmare fuel, the best places to start are sheep's head fish and leatherback turtles. Trust me. The sheep's head fish's incisors are eerily human-like, and they also have rows of molar-looking teeth on the roof and bottom of their mouths. They use these chompers to grab, grind, and crush hard prey such as clams and oysters. The beautiful and famously chill leatherback turtles prefer softer prey, such as jellies. But keeping them from slipping out of their mouth can be tricky. Luckily, they have terrifying teeth-like spines lining the inside of their mouths, all the way down to their esophagus. 
They point backwards, so Jelly is trying to sneak out, get stuck in them. They're like traffic spikes for lion's mane jellies. If you are out of toothpaste, a mixture of baking soda and salt will clean your teeth very well. Moving on to mammals, but staying in the ocean, we have the misnomered crab eater seals. These chunky dog mermaids don't eat crab at all. They're actually Antarctic krill specialists, and their teeth play a vital role in their hunting success. When they encounter krill, they take a big gulp and then push out all the water through the sieve-like teeth. The water goes out and the krill stays in. Another marine mammal, the narwhal, has one of the most impressive canines in the animal kingdom. Though it looks like a horn, the narwhal's tusk is an elongated canine tooth that can reach lengths of up to 3 meters. Nobody knows what they're used for and theories range from sexual selection, to hunting tools, to communication devices. What we do know is that they're extremely sensitive sensory organs and might be able to detect changes in water pressure and ocean salinity. On land, having a nice set of teeth is usually a great way to get mates. Turned down by the girls, can't get to first base. A failure in the army, in business, in romance. Reason? Bad teeth. Walruses have gigantic tusks about one meter long. They use them to fight for access to females, but in most cases, just having larger teeth discourages potential challengers from picking a fight. Vampire deer, unlike most other deer species, lack large antlers, and instead, they have long, sharp fangs. To fight, they stand on their hind legs and punch each other in the face until one falls down. Then the one that's left standing comes in with its sharp fangs to deliver a coup de gras. Elephants sometimes also use their huge tusks for self-defense, but serious tusk fights are rare. They're mostly used as digging tools when looking for salt, water, and roots. They also use them to mark their territories by stripping the bark off trees. The weirdest tusks belong to the babirusa. At first sight, they seem like obvious fighting tools, but they're far too brittle to be used in battle. Babirusa are more boxers than fencers, and prefer a good slap over the face than stabbing each other with their tusks. Their real purpose remains a mystery, but they're probably a way to display fitness. Unfortunately, their fitness display can become too much of a good thing, as their tusks are known to curve backwards. If they get too long, they can pierce through the babirusa's eyes and skull. Finally, we have the naked mole rat, an industrious little rodent that uses its teeth as boring machines. Naked mole rats are burrowing animals and spend all of their lives underground. Their teeth are outside of their mouths, so they can dig without swallowing dirt. They're also used for fighting off invaders and predators. But the amazing thing about them is that they can be moved individually for more precise digging and to carefully carry their babies. Sure enough. When her friend, the dentist, looked at Judy's mouth, he was pleased to see her healthy gums and teeth. When you're traveling, you have to pack lightly, but there are a few things that I have to have with me everywhere I go. A tablet for sketching and taking notes, a camera to film cool animals, and a reliable watch. Our friends at Undone designed stunning watches that fit every occasion. While we were in the middle of the Australian wilderness, I came to rely on my undone watch as an essential part of my kit. We traveled for a couple weeks, and my undone base camp didn't miss a step. The first giveaway we did with Undone was so popular that we wanted to give our fans another chance to win one of these stunning timepieces. 
Undone were kind enough to create two custom watches with drawings from the show displayed on the back of the case. By clicking the link in the description of the video, you'll be entered to win one of two original watches to keep you company on your own adventures. They're as reliable as they are stylish. Thanks, Undone! What would you do if you could move your teeth independently? And what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching and see ya!